Hoisting the ensign as a new morning breaks is something of a ritual, just as it is to bring it in with the sunset. Traditions of another sphere, where nature and spirit don't seem to be impaired by the complexities of life today. The first cup in the morning might underline a feeling of freedom, the feeling to be right here at the heart of this world, with all its beauty, its discoveries, all its secrets and stories of the sea. On deck Borkham Reef 4, you could not be more at one with this. It is not a dream, not an illusion, it is reality. All you have to do is to get the hook up. The yacht is ready to take you anywhere, even before you've finished your tea. And she's perfect in the very best traditions of this maritime world to write your own new chapter into it. Many of the best ones were written by Captain Joseph Conrad, the world famous author, encompassing adventures, seamanship, outrageous characters and the way they were shaped by the sea. Ships and how they were challenged and tested by the truth in deep water and shoal. Many of his novels, like The Mirror of the Sea, build on the proposal that the sea is a place where truth must be faced by both men and boats. Nowhere to hide, an area of total honesty. In The Mirror of the Sea, to use this as a metaphor, a vessel will finally prove her qualities. And for sure, this is at a very different level from the propaganda put out by advertising brochures. The Seven Seas will finally judge whether the construction of hull and rig are strong enough, if they perform beautifully under all conditions, on all courses, if the yacht will be a safe and comfortable home as she makes the voyage. In order to achieve this, starting with no more than a vision, you can't bring in enough know-how from naval architects, designers and builders. Further on, the key to avoiding disappointment and frustration is a highly experienced owner who knows exactly what he wants and who can pull together the perfect team to transform his visions into reality. Borkham Reef 4 was blessed with it all. Stepping on board, anyone familiar with Conrad's work could never imagine that a connoisseur like him would fail to be impressed by the yacht's presentation. It's virtually impossible not to notice a pronounced character, a clearly defined spirit. It's one of strength, of clean organisation and functionality. What shines through it all, implied in every feature, is the straightforward spirit of honesty. And it goes almost without saying that the perfect craftsmanship in every detail would stand comfortably before even Conrad's critical inspection as would the spotless standard of maintenance, doing credit to the dedicated crew. Fittings, winches and blocks, all the exclusive gear breathes an uncompromised tradition of top quality. Famous labels like Rondal catch the eye, while invisible forces combine with modern high-tech such as custom-designed hydraulic systems. The enormous loads and forces produced by the 1,164 square metre sail area on the 50 metre high aluminium rig with its state-of-the-art carbon booms can be handled by a small crew without any compromise in performance. Whether you're racing round the cans or rounding the great capes on a circumnavigation, everything is within finger or toe tip control, including, of course, the heavy furlers for the head sails. State of the art. Ropes simply disappear below the deck. Look at the main sheet. It ends up tucked out of the way on a hidden hydraulically driven drum. The same happens for the runners and some of the sheets. All this visible and invisible perfection has been carried out by the legendary Royal Houseman Shipyard. This may not be Conrad's time, but even the most professional sailors of our own day would find it difficult to conceive how much expertise, experience and innovative power went into Borkham Reef 4 in the four years of planning and building.
and how many hours of discussion among the experts at Royal Houseman in search of the best solutions under the leadership of Walter Houseman himself. Going back in history, the choice of builder made by Wilhelm von Fink was his guarantee of first-class quality. The other general decision was for the schooner rig, well known for the flexibility that comes from splitting the sail area into smaller units. The general advantages this brings are easier handling by a smaller crew and more options for coping with wind and weather. The owner's awareness of how difficult it is to define the optimum hull shape in this magic contradictory triangle of seaworthiness, speed and comfort led him to choose two of the best known naval architects of our time, Gerald Dykstra and Niels Helleberg from the John Alden office. And to keep the beauty and style coming along below decks, the interior designer John Munford formed the missing keystone in this dream team. We get a first impression of John's design work as we take a peep at the crew quarters in the forward section of the yacht. Wilhelm von Fink underlined the basic reason to build new at the launch party in Amsterdam in 2002 with a twinkle in his eye. He believed his fine crew should have more room than they had on Borkham Reef 3, ideally with everyone to his own cabin. The captain's cabin underlines the traditional, warm, cosy look that John created. Even the crew quarters demonstrate a lot of attention to detail. So does the crew mess room. Together with the large and totally functional galley, all is located in the forward area of the yacht. There's just one highly sensible exception to this. At the aft end of the yacht, behind the deck saloon and the large cockpit, is the entrance to the chart house. And from here, stairs lead to the engineer's cabin. In case of a technical alarm, engineer Chris Probert is right there, even in the middle of the night. He sleeps next door to the engine room. Borkham Reef's technical heart is another example of clean design as well as high-level maintenance by Chris. Spotless, in perfect condition. The hydraulic pumps and valves, air conditioning, water maker. In the centre stands the 1,070 horsepower powerhouse the main engine by MTU. It gives Borkham Reef 4 not only an enjoyable, comfortable cruising speed, it's also a safety insurance, driving the yacht to wherever you want her, even if the weather's foul and the wind's straight in your teeth. Plus, as a typical detail of basic concept, if you decide to tackle a full transatlantic while drinking your morning tea, her tank capacity is large enough, even if there isn't a breath of wind the whole way. It might not be sailing, but even travelling under engine is a great feeling. To move as smoothly as the helm feels, helped by the special pitch propeller arrangement. All details of Borkin Rift's conception fit together like a giant puzzle. A visible manifestation of this is the consistency of John Mumford's design. The main saloon's round skylight links Borkham Reef 4 to the golden age of yachting. It was seen, amongst others, on the famous Meteor 4, the Kaiser's racing schooner. Beneath it on Borkham Reef 4, the saloon matches John's original sketches. This is the starboard side of that large space. It can be separated from the dining area to port John Mumford's style doesn't focus only on beauty with the warm, cosy appearance of the top-class mahogany. The round corners of the furniture are a safety feature down here, as well as up on deck in the cockpit area or the houses. It all fits perfectly into the spirit of the yacht. 
This incredibly crafted handrail guides you from the main saloon a few steps down into the owner's stateroom. For sure you'll have quiet nights here because of the sound insulation, plus the fact that the whole interior construction is embedded in a rubber cocoon. Connected to the stateroom is the owner's bathroom. To port in the owner's area is the office. Once again, the mixture of functionality and cosiness John created using the skills of Hausman's craftsmen links with the special charm of sitting in the office sofa to somehow reflect the whole character of Borkham Reef's behaviour when she's at sea. Following the main companionway forward from the saloon and taking a look into the guest cabins. There'll be peace and quiet down here even if major manoeuvres are in progress on deck. The whole owner and guest area, together with all the bathrooms, is located amidships, where the motion of the hull is generally less detectable than at bow or stern. And in sharp contrast to a thin keel under a canoe-bodied hull, Borkham Reef's long keel design supports this vital feature. The lines, lifted from the drawing boards of Dijkstra and Helleberg, create a smooth motion while cutting through the seas, as Captain Tim Corrie confirms. You can have quite a rough sea state and she will just power straight through it and you won't even notice. Mm. Uh, the wake behind her, you just look aft and then she just glides by um, very comfortably. As Gerald Dykstra reported, Borkham Reef 4's hull shape goes basically back to the designs of the fishing schooners of the US East Coast. They became famous for their legendary seaworthiness, loading capacities and speed as well. This was the order of priorities in Wilhelm von Fink's design brief. All you have to do is substitute loading capacity with the synonymous concept of comfort. The shear line and deck arrangements were influenced by the schooner Puritan. Niels Helleberg reported that von Fink was very fond of that olden design. This resulted, amongst other things, in a very well protected and comfortable cockpit area between the deck saloon and the chart house. And when you watch the water surging by from here, you see that the supremely seaworthy hull has turned out to be seriously fast at the same time. Big J-class race yachts have been left in the wake even in this nice breeze, she's already moving at 12 knots. Despite the fact that speed was not top of the briefing list, it feels as though the design team managed to lift a magical point in the triangle with the otherwise opposing aspects of seaworthiness and comfort. It's, it's almost a perfect algorithm for having such a, a beautiful vessel and completely powered up. Uh, she just wants to run. When we were out sailing the other day, uh, we, were, we were sitting comfortably on 15s and uh, she was flat and we had the topsail up and uh, yeah, it was, it was just magnificent. Up to 45 knots of wind, real schooner weather, all 1,164 square metres set. Borkham Reef flies through the seas. How fantastic to feel the power of the yacht converting the wind force into speed. To enjoy the beauty of it all without any suggestion of being anything other than safe and very comfortable at the same time. It's hard not to get excited about it.
fulfilling moment. Ready for the afterglow in the deck saloon. Ready to let the mind flow. Joseph Conrad was somewhat skeptical when people spoke about their love for the sea. He'd seen its forces. He preferred passion for the sea as more appropriate. But the light, warm evening breeze invites the mind to flood quietly around the feelings of the soul. Maybe it isn't the sea, but one thing's sure, some yachts were and are loved by the people who own and sail them, and Borkham Reef 4 is the living proof. Ready for the procedure, part of the tradition. An ancient institution that Borkham Reef is now representing, yet she's translated it into the mood of our own times, showing the way clear into the future. Up until the next call of the anchor bell. The winch is turning again. It isn't a prayer wheel, nor is it a mantra, but the movement promises new adventures, outside and inside, to keep us young. Far away, the horizon is calling, and there's no finer way on planet Earth to get us there than Borkham Reef. Borkham Reef, she's built to sail across any ocean, across the high seas, and essentially to go around the world. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, at, at some stage she will be heading that way again. I am a pilgrim for beauty, said a woman gazing at Borkham Reef 4 at a Caribbean pier many years ago. She was beautiful enough herself. I just have to come here every morning, she continued. It makes my day. This memory resurfaced, chatting with the helicopter pilot, flying back to base after filming. Too hot down here in the summer, said we. Too wet up there in Hamburg was the reply. It's never right, we agreed. Must be human nature. Yes, said the pilot, but here's an exception. What about today, looking down like God himself on this glorious schooner, eating up a breeze made just for her? <laughs>